Good afternoon, everybody. Mm. Sadly, I'm back under the influence of Lucasade. But of course, that's not why you called here. No. I want to talk about the plans of the 1st of June again, because we've had it confirmed where this protest is going to be taking place. It's going to be taking place at Parliament Square. Of course, it's all tentative as usual, because we don't know if the police are going to fuck us around or fuck Tommy around. I mean, we all know that they love to fuck Tommy because he doesn't need sex. He gets it every day from the government because they keep fucking him. But I digress. If what is to be uh, said is true, which I have no doubt of whether or not it is, and as long as they don't mess around with this, our protest has taken place in Parliament Square. And as said, I am tentative on my attendance to it because the only thing that's going to keep me from being there is if I'm hospitalised for a serious injury or because I'm nearly dead or if one of my family members gets into that kind of trouble where they're hospitalised and what have you. Because obviously I have to make sure my family's all right first. But other than that, every intention to go in there. That's the plan, anyway. But we'll have to see what happens as far as the hard left are concerned. And, of course, where would be the fun if there weren't a few screws turned? Because the police have decided to say, well, the counter-protest that wants to come along, they need to be within verbal distance of you. They need to be able to basically shout and scream and all that nonsense. No, they don't. They don't need to be anywhere near us. And Tommy even stated he doesn't want us anywhere near them. Because he knows full well that hither or weather are going to end up clashing heads. Or oh, sorry, is it clashing heads? Probably is, probably isn't, I don't know. But basically, he's worried there's going to be a confrontation between the two. And I don't blame him. It happened before in Manchester when Tommy had uh, engaged with the police and said, we do not want to go through uh, the way to Antifa. But then the police decided to take him straight on that path towards Antifa. And of course, things got heated, to put it mildly. So, understandably, a lot of us do not trust the police right now. And you can't really blame us for it because there's evidence of them stabbing us in the back before. And obviously, as of recently, we also know that they love to kettle us in and then decide to push confrontation. Now, whether it's by getting in the past, because it hasn't happened as often, if at all, as of recent days, but in the past, they would basically piss us off and then cause us to go charge at them. But since we've been behaving ourselves and we've been sitting here voicing our concerns and doing everything peacefully, what we see seen the police do is instigate it. They're getting their knit needles and they're already getting their yarn done and making sure that shit spins real good. Well, the trouble is they don't know how to make a ball. Anyway, they're going to spin a yarn. They're going to try, I'm nearly certain, to instigate something. And then the media will be there. Click, click, making sure they get all that good shit on their cameras and on their video cameras as well. And then go out with the, the headlines, far right attack police, as they usually do. That is what they love to do. This isn't a matter of we want to cause trouble. And I know someone even in the comments on one of my other videos had said, I'm looking for a fight. No, I'm not looking for a fight. Do I look like with these... Flabby fucking arms. I'm going to have to take this off, aren't I? God damn it. Bear with me. Right. New suit. Or shirt, rather. Anyway, do you honestly think with these flabby arms, I'm going to be able to do any real damage? Hmm? Yes. I can take the piss out of my own weight and my own flaws. I bet you won't see the Palestines do that. No, 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 no. They prefer that legendary art called projection. Just like the mainstream media and the police. But that's something they won't tell you. 
These bastards will do everything in their power to get a paintbrush and paint across the wall the we're all far right. No, we're not far right. We're Brits who've had enough. We're Brits who are sick and tired and are pissed to our eyeballs with the way you act, British police, British establishment. You don't represent us. So understandably, we don't trust you. We don't like you. We don't respect you. That being said, we will at least be tolerant towards you. Because after all, a lot of us have a modicum of decency that we would like to uphold. Will you do that? I suspect not. I think you will be there with your media crew ready, with your cameras, ready to get it on film of us having a punch up or whatever or pushing back violently against you. And then you're going to go with the headline that we are far right or sorry, far right. I think you're going to be bitterly disappointed. Or, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there'll be some infiltrators, or, or well, by, by infiltrators, I say that with the spelling of infill and then T-R-A-I-T-O-R-S, who are basically going to be there to undermine the narrative of what our people are trying to do, which is, peacefully protest against the two-tier policing system and clearly the justice system that we've currently got. I'd like to be wrong. I'd like to be oh so wrong. And as I've said before, can't stress it enough, I'll say it here again. I do not condone violence at any of these protests, but I will always completely understand why anybody who loses it goes ahead and does it. There is a big difference between condoning it and understanding it. I think a lot of us are in the same boat as me. Well, it's a pretty fucking heavy boat, so they'd have trouble staying afloat. Anyway, I think they're, I think they're all in the same boat as me. Like, they don't want to see that shit, but they'll understand if people do that. And they'll understand why they've done it. But they'll still condemn them. Just like I will always condemn them. What do you think? Do you think our police are going to play ball? <laughs> Maybe pinball. I don't know about actual ball. Personally. But I said, I could be wrong. And I'd love to be wrong. I want the police to prove me wrong. I want them to put their money where their mouth is. I want them to prove to us that they are capable of being respectful, politically neutral, and not instigate shit. I know, it's a tall order. It's a pretty tall order. They will do everything they can, I think, to try and screw us over. And what's sad is, unlike the Muppet, Laura Johnson, who got away with criminal damage. They'll do everything they can to try and get us down for crimes we may not even commit. And as I've said before, if a policeman goes out of their way to attack you directly, you have a right to push them away and get them away from you and basically defend yourself. If they try to, sorry, if they have a reason to arrest you, you can't resist arrest. Because that then is going to lead to charges. As I've said before. But if you are getting singled out and attacked by the police, they have no right to do that unless they have a reasonable cause to do so. Which, as long as we're all well behaved, touch wood, they won't have that reason. But do everything you can to avoid potentially engaging with the police. In fact, most of the time they'll get you to engage with them to give joinder, which is basically where you 
give them your details, your name and what have you. And just say, I do not consent. The only way they can force you to give you uh, to give them your first name or any name for that matter is they have to arrest you and have reasonable cause to do so. If they have no reasonable cause to arrest you, they can't arrest you. If they do arrest you, you are forced to give your name. But if the crime turns out to be false, then basically it's on them. At the end of the day, we've got to make sure that we behave ourselves. No lager, no getting shit-faced before the day, unless it's on Lucas Aid. Anyway, don't get drunk, don't do anything stupid, and make sure you do everything you can to avoid confrontation, because that's what they want. The media will do everything they can with the police to stitch us up, and you know it. It's too bad the police can't take out the trash, as it were. And by the trash, I mean the Palestinians and the Just Stop Oil movements. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you this. I'm afraid I had to conclude it in there. Because say it with me, folks. It doesn't suit the narrative. That's what it boils down to. They want to spin their yarn... Feed it to the good little sheeple who don't think for themselves, who don't do any research, who are happily being spoon-fed the bullshit. That's what they're going to do. It's up to us to showcase to the world what these guys are doing. Remember, 1% control the world. 4% are global sellout puppets. And remember the, the rest of it now. 90% of the world are still asleep. 5% of us know, and we're the 5%, know what the hell's going on, knows what the, the, the 4% are trying to do, and are trying to wake up the 90%. And of course, the 4% are trying to stop the 5% from waking up the 90%. Now, that's one I haven't had to use before, or, or very often. But it sums this up perfectly. And Tommy Robinson has quite rightly said, if thousands, tens of thousands, even hundreds of thousands, if we have enough support, marched in the capital city, we could lock the country down just like that. And we could do it all legally. That would be the start of a revolution. And they would have to take notice. And even the sheeple would have to realise that shit is going down. And the establishment will not be pleased at all. They will try to... How do I put it? They will try to downplay the numbers. They will try to make it out that we're just neo-Nazis and far-right racists and thugs and football hooligans, when that is nothing of the sort. So, make sure you behave yourself when you're up there. I will hopefully be up there. Oh, and a few other things you're going to want to do when you go up there. Number one, biggest, most important thing, clean out your fucking recycling bin. I know I'm going to do it myself, and I'm not talking about the recycling I've got here to hold my household rubbish. I'm talking about the recycling bin or recycle bin on your phone. Get rid of all unwanted files, all unwanted stuff on your phone, or stuff that you haven't used in like 20 years, or what have you. Make sure you have full capacity. For your data. Full fucking capacity. Because then. You will be able to record. As much of this protest. As you are physically capable of doing. Because at the end of the day. As I said. I think they're going to do everything they can. To stitch us up. And the more of us there are. With phones in hand. Ready to record every 
single little bit of detail on this protest, the harder the police will have it. The harder the time the police will have being able to stitch us up. Because we'll have the evidence there. How do you think the police will be able to escape evidence? Hmm? Do you think they can get away from it? Or they might be able to delete the body cam footage. How about hundreds of thousands of phones? Or even just 10,000? Or even 5,000 phones recording every little angle? Do you think they'll be able to escape that? I don't think even the king himself would be infallible to that shit. There is no shot the police would be willing to arrest, or hold for that matter, and I don't think they can, hold 5,000 plus people holding up phones, recording everything they do. So that's number one. Number two, bring lots of water. Bring lots and lots of water. Because even if it's raining, it's still going to be bloody hot. Make sure you bring hydration. I've been getting better at it myself. My workplace actually has kind of encouraged me to do that shit. Where I've had at least two or three bottles of water a day. So that I can say has been a big benefit from my workplace. But make sure you bring a ton of water. Any bottle will do. Just so long as you've got enough hydration on hand so that you can stay hydrated on this protest. And obviously bring food as well if you can. But number three, clean up after yourself. Clean up after yourself. I can't stress that enough. And I haven't done it myself with my kitchen. Anyway, make sure you clean up after yourself because... They will use any tiny little thing they can to get us. Even littering. They've done it before. They'll try it again. Make sure you clean up after yourselves. If we don't drink beer, we don't look for confrontation, we don't look to cause trouble, we don't commit any criminal damage like the Just Stop Oil wankers do, and we clean up after ourselves, the police will have absolutely zero legitimate reason to come after us. And if they do come after us, as I said, have the phone ready. Record every angle. Every angle. Because even the police are not above the law. Don't let them forget that. Hell, it's kind of fitting how I had the fucking Magna Carta video come out with those two old age pricks. Because I don't think that they are worthy of the title old age pensioner. Like a lot of good other people are. But it's fitting how I had that video come up just as I'm now talking about how we're going to conduct ourselves on the 1st of June at this protest. No policeman or woman or whatever gender they want to try and identify as, even though, frankly, there's only male or female. But no police officer whatsoever is above the law. Nobody is. Not even the king himself. So if they try to do anything below the belt, we are going to grab them by the balls. Metaphorically speaking, of course. Because they have to follow the same laws that we have to follow. That they should be enforcing on both sides of the spectrum and be politically neutral. But we know they don't. This is why we're protesting in the first place. But if we hold them to account, record everything, stay out of trouble and make sure... We keep a nice, healthy distance from the car protesters if they show up. We've got a very strong chance of showing the world just how crooked and corrupt the justice system and the establishment. And of course, most importantly, the police, how crooked they really are. And through the documentary of Lawfare, we might just open 
a whole lot of eyes who have been, of the people who have been stuck in the Matrix, who have finally been given that red pill and have woken up to the bullshit the establishment is selling.